republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And we are back once again. It is Sunday afternoon, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. Not much of a desert. It is pouring it down pouring rain. Pouring down rain. 100% chance of rain for today and tomorrow. And tomorrow, yep. And, and you know, it's as much of a drought as we have been in. Well, across my yard, it's squishy. Yes. The yep. ground's like, I don't know what to do with this shit. Yeah, I was up I was up north uh, Friday night, and it was raining, pouring up there. Same thing. The ground was just squishy. Yeah, it just, we didn't know what to do, man. Nope. But joining me today is Bathroom Paul. That's, Good afternoon. That's forever your nickname on this podcast. It'll be my nickname forever, I think, everywhere I go. And you don't mind that. Not at all. Yeah, bathroom Paul. We, it's cold enough in here. I even turned the heater on I, today. I saw that when I came in. It's a little chilly in here today. Oh, yeah. A little chilly. So what's Bathroom Paul been up to? Uh, working mainly, um, buying some new firearms, getting ready for a gun show on the 6th. I was so. going to ask why you were working, but it's obviously so you can buy new firearms. So I can buy new firearms. I get that. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, hopefully next month I'll add another one to the collection. Nice. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm thinking the Canic Meta. So <laughs> I, I know you're, you're going to make fun of me. I already know it, You've but got, go ahead. So which so which gun did you just buy? I just bought the Canic TP9SA. And that's your second Canic. My second Canic. And why did you why just settle on that one? Uh, Well, honestly, I was going to buy the Meta, but I had a bad experience at the gun shop that I went to to get it. Tell us about that bad experience and tell <laughs> us the gun store that you were in when that happened. Uh, we like to dish. We like to dish the dirt uh, on this show. I, I went to Quick Response Firearms here in Twin Falls and... I was talking to the guy. I uh, was asking a bunch of questions because that's what I do when I go in. And well, You're supposed to. Yep. I already knew what I wanted. I already had the information I wanted to see. Double check it. If, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, got to the point where I had my hand on my wallet, uh, was getting ready to pull it out, and he looked me in the eye and said, uh, so are you going to buy it or not? Wow. And, yeah. And I just went, nope, not now. And set it back down on the counter and walked out. Did he say anything when you said that? Nope. Did, I so, didn't give him a chance. I just turned around and walked out. So how long How long had you been like, I mean, discuss, you weren't there for like two hours. No, this no. Thing. All I, right. I'm just. It might have been 10 minutes or so. Really? Yeah, it wasn't real long. Was the place like, was there like a line? I'd imagine there's like a line of people. The place is packed. He's looking to get to someone else to help. Am I right? There was a couple other people in there. There was, they because they'd put out some ammo. It was a Friday afternoon or Friday morning or whatever. So there were some people in there. And so were I they waiting though? No. For, they were browsing, and it, it, everybody was being helped that needed help. So this guy was just an arrogant jerk. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, did Do you get the feeling that was kind of his, like, what he does? I, I don't oh, know. We could talk about I, this. I've, I've never been in there before, so right, it was the first true. time I'd been in there. Um And and at first he was real, you know, I, I think he just got irritated because I was asking questions. and uh, That's his job I, is to I, answer I, I know, but you, you know how some of these sales guys are. Right. They just want to make that sale and hurry up and get out of here and and I, that's the impression i got that's an interesting way to run a new business yes but anyhow so you left there and so they lost a sale they lost a sale and you picked up this canic this whatever i can i can't keep track of the lingo they've got they've got the a, names yeah they're they're all like tp9 tp40 depending on what it is and then there's like the sxf s sfx they're they're backwards and <laughs> Uh, the elites and stuff like that, and this is the SA. Sounds like a TV channel. It really does. <laughs> so I went over to DMB and picked it up from them. <clears throat> Great, good, good. You went over to visit our friends over there. Yeah, that's good. And so now you're looking at buying the um, the Meta. The Meta. What what do we decide is different about that? Do you know you've you've done a little? We talked about on the podcast. At least I have. You've done more of a deep dive, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, so there, there's not a big change. It's about the same size as the SA, the one that I bought. <laughs> right. Makes it a little more carryable, um, but it has the. It already has the cutout for a plate for your optic. Okay. Um, it leaves in your sights, so you don't have to pull out your dovetail sight. Okay. Um, it stays affixed to the gun, so that you can co-witness. Um, it does have. It comes with the suppressor height sights on it. 
So it's just like it's like it's just an optic ready version. Well, it's, I mean, it's, 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 uh, they have optic ready versions already. Yeah, the, the the other one that I have is an optic ready, but it's just got the sights and all that. It's just a little yeah. little extra they, bang. Yep, they changed just a few yeah. things. It's got the nice trigger. It's, it's got, got it's got trigger. a great trigger in it's it. It's got the flat trigger. Yep. It? Yeah, it's okay. got the flat trigger in it. Okay, so I guess they're it, they're not, and I'm not I'm not dissing on Canics. They're good guns, but it's funny because we talked about it before. But they do everything that every other firearm yes. company does. Yep. So it, it's almost the same gun. So 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 Canic came out with your basic. Mm -hmm. Then it came out with like this, and it's got the really elite. It's got the combat whatever. Elite, yep. And it's got the good stuff, but it's a full size gun. Yep. And so now they got, oh, well, we'll give you one more option. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you a carry size gun yep. that's got all the optic stuff on it and it's got the good trigger. Yep. And they can get more money out of it. Oh, absolutely. Obviously, because yeah. you've got all. Th I've got two of them now. So now you need two more to, fit, to round out their whole platform. That's right. <laughs> I can get the one with the threaded barrel. And <laughs> Here you yeah. go. So you mentioned, uh, I'm going to throw out here real quick, though. I always forget. Um and I can try and do this, but uh, if you, for those of you who are watching YouTube Live, it is up and running right now. Uh, somehow, I don't know how, but it is. Uh, if you want to comment, you can comment in there. I'll probably just try to answer it via just you know talking in the mic. I don't know that I'm going to sit there and type a whole bunch because I can't do 48 things yeah. at once. And I'm useless when it comes. And to I'm that trying stuff, so. to sit here and look pretty for Catherine <laughs> Paul and everyone. But you mentioned that you uh, are going to be at a gun show. You help out at a gun show. I do. Tell us, tell everyone about it. Where is it at? We do have some local people to listen. So it's the Ray and Don gun show. It's out at the Filer Fairgrounds. Um, typically, he does it twice a year, usually April, November. It'll be on the 6th. Um, and I go out there and I help him do a, a little bit of security and check guns in that come in, right. you know, for customers that are trying to sell it there um, and just kind of handle money, things like that. It's on the 6th, so it's on a Saturday and a Sunday? It's on a Saturday and a Sunday. And a Sunday. What, what does it cost to get into this one? I think uh, I saw five bucks. I believe it's five bucks. Did, did, that, did that price come down? I thought it was usually up around seven. No, I think he's always had it at five. No, I said, make me feel good, Paul. Yeah, okay, he did come down. Okay, sweet. No. <laughs> I'm there. I don't know. I don't ever have to pay, so I don't. So I don't know exactly <laughs> yeah. how much it costs. Yeah, I'm gonna walk in. Say I'm with bathroom, Paul. Yeah, just tell mom there at the counter. She'll let you in. Okay, sweet. I'll yeah. tell him. <laughs> so uh, you look and you can look at guns there. Oh, absolutely. You can look for a meta there. Absolutely. That was where I picked up my first Canic was in April over there. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where I got it the first time. How are the prices at those gun shows? They're just gun show prices, they're aren't they? Yeah. Uh, it, it's just like any place else, you know. When the ammo was high, they were gouging everybody on ammo. Right, right. Uh, when the guns were hard to find, the same thing. They jacked up their prices on guns. Well, and, everyone does. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be really curious to see what the ammo prices are. Um, that's what I'm waiting to see. I mean, because they aren't back down to normal everywhere yet, and they're never going to. I think they actually they're back down to their new normal. I think so. But it's still not as high as what it got. It wasn't Biden high. No. <laughs> so No, where did I, I, where did I see it? I saw 9 millimeter was like 18 bucks a box somewhere the other day. Yeah, yeah. So I, it'd be interesting to see. But, you know, I like to go there. You know, I might cruise over there to look and see what I'm doing. Um, I don't know if I'll make it over Saturday or Sunday, but it's nice to just kind of see – see what's there you get some odds and ends there mm -hmm. some weird things so i picked up and this is safety checked right okay it guys. is i got my hands on a little keltec p oh, flip this around here a little keltec p3at um and i was always looking for i was looking for a running gun yeah, yeah you've been right? talking about it for months and you know that this is an older gun right it's an older model it's been out for quite a while like long time yeah and back when i lived in kansas i think it just came out and it was like all the rage like pocket carry Ugh, pocket carry <laughs> scares me but that's what guys were using it for dropping into their pocket uh -huh. of their cargo pants when those are still oh, yeah. a thing right and um you know i got my hands on that's not horrible to shoot i I just pulled the trigger and it was really nice. The trigger is long, but yeah. it's smooth. It's not heavy. Yep. It there's literally nothing to hold on to. But man, it may fit depending on where I'm running. Right. If I go running up in the mountains, you know, uh, to my longer trail type runs, you know, I don't mind taking my revolver. My I don't mind taking that 357. It's yeah. not. It's not a problem. But for just around here, having something, having something nice. Hey. Caucasian Sasquatch. <laughs> Actually, I was speaking to this guy the other day. We got some unfinished business we got to talk about later on, me and him. But anyhow, this Keltec P380 so light, just just it's not bad to carry. 
And I've been seeing 380 ammo too. Yeah, and I've got some. And it's not like I need to shoot it a bunch. And the sights on it are literally non-existent. They actually just, they suck. Yeah. There's nothing to see. So it's kind of a, what they call an eyeball gun. Yeah, you belly just gun, point and shoot. Point and shoot, right? You know, early in the morning on that Canyon Rim Trail. You never know what's out yeah. there, man. You might need it for a porcupine. A po- no, that's my spirit animal. <laughs> not the porcupine, but coyotes. Yeah, they I've are. been running out there in the dark before. And, uh, well, whenever I run out there, it's in the dark. And you get just past where Evil Knievel jumped. Okay. And, like, where it drops down to go into, like, Shoshone Falls. Okay. But there's a couple right past the the, the jump site. There's a little loop-de-loop there and some hills. Mm-hmm. And um, lots of sagebrush down there. And I got my headlamp on, and it's, like, 4.30 in the morning. And um, I hear I hear howling. I hear, I hear uh, you know, movement. And all of a sudden, you look around, you see eyes oh yeah and then you just know you're surround i mean they're not surrounding me but there's like you interrupted them right oh yeah they're on either side of the the the, uh, the trail and it's just uh it's a little unnerving oh yeah i've i've run into them down there at pillar falls on the other end oh yeah it's it, a little that and i'm usually listening to some some crazy <laughs> paranormal type <laughs> art bell sasquatch podcast yep. or some crap and i'm out there hearing noise and i'm like <laughs> The only thing I can light up is where my headlamp turns, you yeah. know, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> run faster, Todd. Run faster. It's it's, it's it's my version of pre-workout. There you go. A little <laughs> adrenaline boost for you. <laughs> exactly. Get up that hill. Get up that hill. Uh, but, no, I'm kind of excited to try this out as a carry gun for when I'm running. Yeah. But what I brought it up for is because I, I only have one mag for it. It only came with one magazine uh, where I purchased it. So maybe I can find another mag for it. You, I, I bet you could at the gun show. They sell all kinds of mags there. They do. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to take, take the empty mag with me just so I can compare and make sure I get the right one. But I don't know. That's I'm uh, really excited to, to, to start carrying this are thing. You, are you still using the... Uh, chest rig that you do you still run with a chest rig uh, no nah, sometimes um i i it's a really good way to carry gun i think if you're hiking and stuff it's a really good way riding four rollers is wonderful mm-hmm. running though it, it it i breathe too much and it kinda, no it, that too no it kind of const- like feels like it constricts my breathing does oh, that okay. make sense it does because you i don't want to move you got to make it tight enough so it doesn't, I, flop, so it doesn't all over the place. flop all over the place and then when i'm running i'm like <gasps> yeah i'm gonna die so i gotta figure out a way to carry this exactly I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm toying with a few ideas. I'll get, I'll get creative here real quick. <laughs> creative. Uh, what else? Oh, so this is a new addition to the podcast, but I think we're going to have a little quiz. And if you uh, get an answer wrong, you're going to meet my little friend. Oh, um, I, I think it's time for me to go. I think, <laughs> come on, I'm going to just reach, reach right on right right here. Under, get me in the knee. Watch me fry out and burn out my roadcaster. Oh, this this look at what does it say there? Two million, two million, two million volts. I haven't let anyone uh, found anyone that'll let me tase them. There's a dog out in the yard. I saw it. Not the dog. Chickens. <laughs> oh, you fried you, chicken. You go grab a chicken and hold on to it. <laughs> uh, no. And then I'm gonna. Oh, it's, it's broken now. Oh no, there, there it goes. It, it doesn't like that's a feedback. <laughs> Did you hear that feedback? And uh-huh. the something's going on there, but. I can love my taser. I don't know. I'm probably never going to use it, but my gosh, is it. It's fun to have. It's fun. To have. It's wanna, a nice little toy. I tried to sneak up on my 16 year old son the other day. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I should wait till my wife's asleep. Yeah. If you want to die, <laughs> I know she knows how to shoot. <laughs> my boys have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. Maybe I'll, uh, I bet you if I walked in the room, all you'd have to do is click and it. went like that. I bet you they get. Oh, yeah. they get out of bed, bed in a heartbeat. Yes, they would. I would jump out of bed in a heartbeat. Sweet. You know, she just got three kitties. Your wife? Yeah. Brand new kitty cats. Perfect. What do you think? I, I would definitely do it to Again, the cat. go grab one and hold on to it. <laughs> and the, the wet cat? <laughs> yeah, it's wet. Go ahead and hold, <laughs> stick your tongue on it, yeah. too. Yeah, like, like a 9-volt battery. <laughs> But anyhow, that's what I've been having fun with. The, I know the women in my women's uh, shooting academy they they thought it was freaking great. Oh, did they? Yeah, they they, they wanted to they wanted to taste me. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but so make that class a little more interesting. Exa- exactly. So they've only got a month left. We've only got November, and then that class is done. That one's done. And today I sat down and started finalizing um, finalizing uh, next year's class. Okay. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to, I mentioned it before, but we'll talk about it again. Um, so this year, great class. I, I, I had, you know, 
fun with class. All the all the women had a great time. Um, but I'm learning and I'm progressing mm-hmm. as I go. And I find that in the class, there I have two different groups running. They're all doing the same thing, just on different days. And you have some uh, women that really want to, they're in there for two different reasons. You have some that really want to progress, right? You know, they're serious about progressing on with their training and moving on. And then you have some that they wanted to learn how to be safe and how to shoot their gun. And they've achieved that, but they aren't too worried about drawing the handgun, right? They aren't too worried about um, the defensive side of it. I mean, maybe like if they're in their house, but they just wanted to know how to, how to shoot their gun. Yeah. So I started with this big group of women and they started to diverge. Does that make sense? Okay, uh-huh. And so in one class, when I have some that want to move on, I can't have them move on and leave half the class you know, behind. Yeah. And so when you teach a class, you train a class, you always have to teach to the lowest common, yep. the lowest, you know, experience, skill level. skill level in the class, which is nothing wrong with that, but you have to do that to keep everybody safe. Yep. And so this year, I'm going to create the two classes. So last year, I just created one and it was such a hit, I, I scrambled and I came up with dates for a second one just because as my overflow right okay and so this year i'm going to create two separate classes i'm going to create one that is is more focused on 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 the women that want to progress and learn how to do some of that um like reactive type shooting that i taught Mm -hmm. you and then some of them just want a place to shoot that you know will still do like open hand combat you know safety first aid that kind of stuff but just kind of want to remain you know level and just you know just kind of retain their skills yeah does that make sense yeah and and that's where i'll put even the very the beginners in there as well right um and then the other class i want them to be able to have already have experience know what those core fundamentals or core principles are and then build on them spend yeah. like a month or two and just focus on trigger press you know and you, and you know what i'm talking about because you've been yep. through that class my yep. behind closed doors class focus on trigger press and then a couple months of focus on gr- on grip a couple of months focus on stance not necessarily in that order but yeah. you know focus on everything and then have half the because it's a 10 month class and then have half those months like five four or five months where they put it all together and they start really start doing those drills where you're bang 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 you know uh-huh. uh you know that kind of stuff and so that's my goal uh, maybe i'll put on a wig and join the ladies class it sounds, like lady. a, it sounds like a fun class you have to shave your beard Oh man, I can't. It's not, do that. it's not. It's not fair time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I mean that's my goal anyway. Because there's definitely is a portion of them that want to really move on. Yeah, and there's a portion that are fine and they're just happy where they are. Because everyone was in it for. I had one lady actually say, "Hey, I just showed up." You know, she's like, I think she did, she's not even coming anymore. But she goes, "Hey, I really enjoyed the class, and I just wanted to learn how to shoot my gun. And I think it's time for me and the uh, me and the class to kind of go separate ways." And I've learned how to shoot my gun and I've learned safety and I've enjoyed everything up, you know, and I just think I'm, I'm good and I'm going to just do some other things on oh, Thursday nice. nights. Yeah. And, you know, and so she achieved what she wanted to, to achieve. Yep. And I think that's, that's, that's okay. That's not a bad thing. And hopefully the ammo, you know, seemed to be a problem at first, but they all, they all found ammo to shoot. And, you know, I'm, I'm allotting it to like 50 rounds a night, right? At least in the more advanced type class, I'm going to go 50 rounds. 50, yeah, you know, have 50 rounds that you can shoot every night. I don't think that's asking a lot. They sh- literally are shooting twice a month. Yeah, that's 100 rounds a month. Yeah, and 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 it's coming back more online. I haven't it seen is. a ton of nine millimeter in the stores, but um, you know, 380s back in the stores, I've seen it pretty regular. Yeah, uh, and online it's available. That's where yeah. I've been getting mine from. Yeah. You go on, you wait for the, the you know, until they have sales online. Yep, and you buy two hundred fifty rounds, yep. and all of a sudden you you do that twice. All of a sudden you're set for the year. Yeah, at least for my class, right? Yeah. I mean, so it's really not that big of an ask. No, and the prices have come down online too, <laughs> so they're pretty reasonable. I'd never be as reasonable as it once was. No, it, it won't. We were talking about that earlier, I'm but pining at least, for the good old days, right? Seventeen cents around. Oh my gosh, That's great. <laughs> great but so that's that's kind of what i've been up to i had some classes scheduled for today but that didn't happen oh the monsoon the monsoon. out there you just came from hawaii i know that's you got hawaii weather here yeah i bet you it was warmer in hawaii oh, oh i bet it was <laughs> i'll take a hawaiian rainstorm over this any day yeah so i got i got more and more people calling for private classes that were just trying to juggle with the time change is coming up and we're trying to juggle with the weather and oh that's that's another thing time change is coming up so the last month of my women's class they're going to spend one evening on the simulator the shooting simulator which is always a lot of fun I'll yeah dig that thing out again and that we have a night shoot 
Oh, really? Which is cool. So they come out at the same time at six o'clock like they usually do. And I have them bring headlamps because we are somewhat safe, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't want it totally pitch black that they can't see anything. So they are shooting with their headlamps on. Um, I'm not teaching them how to use weapon lights or anything like that. But so they can actually see the target. But it is great for them to be able to see the muzzle flash yeah. of the different kinds of firearms that they're shooting. And uh, that they're usually just uh, makes for great pictures. That makes for fun. And they're usually pretty, uh, you know, pretty amazed by what happens. Uh, I know one gal, and I'll have to talk to her again. Last year, she um, she took my class this year, and last year she brought her um, her dad's three fifty seven uh, Chiapa <laughs> Rhino. Oh, really? That thing blows a fireball <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. That thing's amazing. That'd be fun. Yeah, and then another lady got some of those red coated um, nine mil rounds, or like little tracer, like little tracer rounds. Those are cool. I mean, I, I I took a video of it, and it's like slowed it down. It looks like a laser beam from her gun to the target. Really, just a straight red line. That's, it's it's pretty cool. I have to show, I have to do those pictures up and show you. Yeah, that'll be that'd be neat. Yeah, it's they're they're really cool. But uh, so I'm kind of looking forward to that and give everyone some time off for the holidays. Yeah, and. Uh, Back right. at it in February, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, my other classes are still carrying on, but the Women's Academy is is going to be shut down for a couple. I'm not going to know what to do with my Thursday nights. Yeah, if you've Every, been doing it for 10, 10 months now. For 10 months. And it, I tell you, that 10 months went by fast. Oh, I'm sure it did. Super fast. Especially, you, you talk about how much fun they have in there and how, how good of a class it is. Uh, they, they, I've never had classes give me so much crap. <laughs> I mean, they are just absolutely, and they're full of great ideas, though, and they have such a good time, and it's, oh, it's, it, they're so helpful to each other. It's, it's, that's an amazing. I love having women in classes. They listen. They pay. I, I, Nothing like us, man. Yeah. Well, you guys are great too, but I mean, it's just, it's just a different. It's a whole different experience. Yeah. I keep looking to see if you want. That's what I was looking, looking up there too. Up there, but uh, yeah. So I mean, it's, it was fun, but. I always talk about the women's class, and that's because I always have so much fun. I, well, my my son took your uh, yeah, permit he, class. What did he think about that? He, he loved it. He thought it was great. He was uh, he he originally wanted to to carry without getting a permit, and I was like, I, I think that's a bad idea. Go down, talk to Todd, right. take the class. You're going to learn some stuff that you didn't know. And when he came out of the class, he's like, I can't believe how much stuff on the internet was wrong compared yeah. to what I learned in Todd's class. Uh, the interwebs suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they suck. So uh, we're going to get him his first pistol here probably uh, next month. And cool. then he wants to take some private classes with you. So I think him and I will be uh, taking some more classes. I appreciate that. I appreciate you giving him my number. Uh, well, I, yeah. So what um, What do you think prompted him all of a sudden? If you don't mind me asking. Y you know, he, he said he didn't like to go. He didn't really go shoot with you that much. No, he never shot with me a ton. <clears throat> Um, we were talking about it and he's, he was just like, you know, dad, with everything that's going on, I think that it's, uh, you know, I, I need to be responsible and take my own safety and in my own hands and, and right. be prepared just in case something happens. It's awesome. And he's a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. I was he's really surprised. Good, and, and I hope you don't mind, you, you know, you've, you've come and you've, you've taken my class before, you've come and you've helped me on the line before. Uh -huh. And so I just told you, Hey, just come shoot. You know, your son's here. It's not that big of a class. Just come shoot. Yep. And I wasn't ignoring you guys. I was listening to you helping him, and I was like, "Ah, Paul's got it." Yeah, I, I hope that was okay. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. I had some more people in that class. I really, oh, that class, yeah, that I one. really need to pay attention. Yeah, that to. one was. And I even I was a little sketched <laughs> out a couple times. I was like, "Oh, dude." Yeah, my permit classes have been small enough now that I've been, you know, they've been like ten people or eight people. Yeah. So I'm able just to cut it down to two groups and cover it myself. Yep. And uh, and yeah, anyhow, even with four or five people on the line sometimes yeah sometimes yeah but he really enjoyed it he, he he was glad he took it right oh keep talking for a minute right. my nose is starting to run. <laughs> it, it's i'm allergic a, to paul i have it must be my beard balm that i put on oh. it's it's got all those funky uh uh what are those natural oils it Can't, might be my bubbly water uh, it could be that too <laughs> that's pretty foo-foo look at that i, I know pretty pink. pink can it says hey you i think the can just hit on me <laughs> It, it, it's hard being sexy. It is. I yeah, I deal with it every single day. <laughs> I wake up this sexy yeah, ball. I know. I, I wish I could one of these days. Then maybe. I put on my little running shorts. Oh, God. With your spandex pants underneath them. I do, and it's cold. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I will be wearing those tomorrow, I'm sure. Of. <laughs> if I go run tomorrow, I don't know. My trail might be. It might it's be supposed pretty, to be. It's supposed to be raining all night. It's supposed to go be through tomorrow. Pretty muddy. I'm going to have to stick to the gravel road. Yeah. I'm a gravel road runner. Yeah. I'll ride my bicycle behind you or something. I don't there know. There you go. 
You can cheer me on. There you go. You I'll can be hold a, my pink water. I'll be a cheerleader and get feed you water. There you go. Woo, run Todd and your sexy little pen. I'm going to shut up. This is the wrong show for that. Oh, so we had some uh, interesting news. In fact, this is kind of one of the reasons why you wanted to. Oh, first of all, let's back up. What gun does your does your son want to get? I was going to ask you that. What is it? What is he? He's liking the uh, an odd caliber. Yeah, he he really liked the forty. He really liked he, the forty. He I shot have... my Glock forty, and he loved it. He huh. that he shot that whole class with the mechanic. Yeah, yeah. With the the optic on it, the red dot. Um, and for at <clears throat> it, at the end there, he wanted to try my forty, so he shot the forty for a little bit, and then for your bullseye contest, that was the one that he decided he wanted to shoot and the forty was the forty for the bullseye contest. So, uh, so but he, he shot it well. I'm he not, did. I'm not. I mean, and I'm not a, totally against the forty. If you could shoot a forty well, fantastic, do it. I still think that even if you can shoot a forty well. If you can shoot a forty well and, and and accurately and quickly, you can shoot a nine even better. Oh yeah, I would agree. But if he likes the forty, that's great. So what what make what model do you think he's looking for? He he's got his heart set on a Glock. I I'm not a fan, but that's what he's got his heart set on. I told him I said we need to go out and shoot some different guns. They so make a can... they make a VP forty. I I know. They make a VP, and I know he liked the VP nine a little bit. He he really liked that one too. Um, but he's he's got his heart set on the Glock. I think that uh, he's got a buddy that's got a Glock that and is talking him into. Oh, you can do all this stuff to it and, and make it tactical and th- th- yeah. I'm, I'm trying to talk him out of that, but you know Aww. if he's going to pay for it, he he can do what he wants. So okay, well that's I was just was wondering. Yeah, he he's got his heart set on the Glock. Well, I look forward to seeing uh, him and you. Back oh yeah, in class that'd be fun. Yeah, we'll definitely be back. Well, we'll do some snow training. Oh, that'd be fun. I don't know what that means except for just stand there and be It'd cold. Be cold, but... shoot this way. Well, you got to practice everywhere, right? You do all the time. Yep. Speaking of that, I got to buy some more silhouette targets. I've been trying to remember that for three weeks and I keep forgetting that. <laughs> yeah, okay. You should text your wife right now to remind you. <clears throat> she won't. Oh, okay. She won't. But we actually had a big thing happen. I think it was on Thursday. Um, and it was actually you when you, you texted me, said, Are you talking about this on the podcast? I, I did. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. You tell us. A little bit. Well, hang on. Let's do this. Let me play the news clip first. Okay. And then I'll let you just go for it. Well, I don't know that I'm that full of it, but all right. You just talk about it and then I'll jump in. But it's about, uh, there was a shooting on, uh, it was Alec Alec Baldwin. Yep. Right. It was down in, was it? Uh, uh, it was Arizona, wasn't it? Somewhere in Arizona down there. Yep. New new Western movie he's making. Western movie he's making. And he ended up pulling the trigger on a prop gun mm-hmm. and there are some bad results so let's before we judge right yeah. we don't know i know let's let's <laughs> let's let's play the clip hopefully this is the right button here we go authorities say that actor alec baldwin shot and killed a woman on the set of his upcoming film rust in new mexico the woman was the film's cinematographer the director was also wounded according to the stage actors union baldwin's prop gun contained quote a single live round Court documents state that before fatal shooting, Alec Baldwin was handed a loaded gun on the film set by a director who wasn't aware it was loaded. Fox News Digital has just obtained a 911 call from a script supervisor on the set, and the script supervisor can be heard blaming an assistant director for failing to make sure the prop gun was safe. Here's a part of that call. So was it loaded with a real bullet or one? I I cannot tell you that. Okay. We have two injuries from a movie gun shot. Okay, we're getting them out there already. Just stay on the phone with me. Okay. Okay. I just an ID that yelled at me at lunch because asking about revision. Did you see him lean over my desk and yell at me? He's supposed to check the gun. He's responsible. Deadline is now reporting that there had been a recent accidental discharge of the prop gun on the set. And the LA Times is reporting that crew members walked off the set just hours before the shooting. One- oh, I shouldn't have done that. I didn't get it set up to pause. But anyhow, it, <laughs> I, I had it to set up to pause. Typically, I didn't uh, do that. Didn't I, just, do I just realized that. So what happened there was uh, there was an accidental shooting. And then the woman that called up to, to report 
report this accidental that called it to report the shooting in the background what people forget sometimes it's not a, it can be a good thing and a bad thing is once you dial on the 911 as soon as you call in there they hit record yep and they record everything yep and it heard her in the background saying i told that guy to check those guns i told that so they're already placing the blame on I don't know the guy who handles the guns or something like well, that. Well, I think he was the, the assistant director. The assistant director gave Alec Baldwin the gun. The gun, and he said it was loaded with a live round. A live round being a, not an actual round like you like a self defense round. It was a live dummy round. Yes, is what it was. A yes. live bl- a blank round. Yes, right. One that's just gonna you know go bang right in theory and in, in theory but you know and what you didn't get to hear on that clip because i'm an idiot and i didn't get my button set up like i should <laughs> is uh they actually bring on an expert and he's uh he's an expert he's dealt with that he's like he's like from the military he's dealt with firearms so he also is they um they bring him in on movies and then and he helps tell them what to do and what they should do and he talks about the basic safety rules mm-hmm. he talks about the safety rules that that it uh, doesn't sound like they were followed. And he also talks about um, he also talks about uh, the fact that even if it was a, a like a blank round, you know, they can shoot powder, they can shoot all kinds of stuff. And if it was an old time gun, which I'm assuming was a period correct gun, which would have been a revolver, mm-hmm. there could have been stuff in the cylinder. It could have been laying in the dirt, rock, anything, and it's going to propel all that stuff out. And I'm not sure. I'm not too familiar with actual blank rounds. Um, but there is like uh, something I think in the in the tip of it. There's a there's a cap in the in the end yeah. of it. Yeah. And they said sometimes what happens is those things will they will fall out, they'll break loose, and they'll be still be sitting in there. And then you fire it again, and all of a sudden you get that being propelled out as well. And then this is the way that um um Brandon Lee died. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Right, but, but go ahead. I I think the round that Alex shot was an actual bullet though. They have. I haven't. I, I'm not disagreeing, but I don't know I, yet. I don't know either. I but, haven't heard anything. Yet. But but the way they describe it, it, it went through uh, the director, or the or whoever yep. it was it shot, passed through him, and then hit the woman behind him. No, passed through her and hit him. Is that what it was? She's dead. Yeah. Yeah. She, okay. That's right. She went through. Shot yeah. through her. So I, I, I'm assuming, and that's you know the wrong right. word, but. Uh, that it's a the actual live round um, because right. they they do have live they did say that they had live ammo that they were using for that production right, right. Um, you know but they're they're trying to throw all this blame on the the assistant director because he gave Alec Baldwin this gun um, it's not a prop gun it it wasn't a prop gun it was an actual firearm yeah, oh, yeah. designed to shoot actual bullets right um, there was lots of mistakes made in my opinion uh, the assistant director should have cleared it before he oh, handed it off yeah um alec baldwin following the basic firearm safety rules should have checked it to make sure it was empty shouldn't have had his finger on the trigger right shouldn't have pointed it at anybody um i get that it's a movie i get that that's what they're doing right. but if it was a prop gun you know that that everything's welded closed you can't get ammo in it um one thing it, right. but it's an actual firearm it could be loaded you, you yeah even if you think it's unloaded and it's a movie you need to take those safety precautions. That's no, just your responsibility. You do. You pick it up. It, everything, you know, it's it's all a firearm. So you double check, you check. I mean, that that's what you do. And I, we're reading the comments up here. It says if Alec was holding the gun, it's Alec's responsibility. And honestly, that's correct to a certain extent. If you hand the gun, if you hand the gun, to, you know, anytime you hand a firearm to mm-hmm. someone, they safety check it. Yep. I don't care if I've just watched you safety yep. check it. You hand it to me, I safety check yep. it, right? What and some of the and there's too much stories and, and, and news reports going on for me to get all of it. Some of the other information that is out there is that earlier, like the day before, um, there was another incident with a gun and a negligent discharge. Yep. And actually a good portion of the cast or who whoever is uh, whoever was there actually walked out, right? actually yeah. walked out because they said the set was unsafe and uh derek's on here he says you're not getting the real story and i bro we're not i mean i'm just no. getting I, I i guarantee you that i mean I'm, we're just getting what we're what i'm told what i yep. hear on the news guaranteed so i'm just dealing with the information that i have right now yeah i can put out a bunch of uh assumptions i think, I think assumptions i think this happens i think that happens and uh, this happened and stuff and i could be right i could be wrong but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to play with the information that I have in front of exactly. Me. Um, I did, and I was going to play it, but it's like twenty minutes long. They actually, um, uh, uh, a an attorney 
uh, came on and he was talking about this and he was talking about, I'm going to get this all screwed up. In fact, I should throw the link up there so people can watch it. It's kind of boring, but it was good information. The attorney was talking about in, they were in New Mexico. No, I think it was Arizona, Arizona, wherever they were at. No, Santa Fe, Santa Fe's New Mexico. If it's Santa Fe, it's in New Mexico. Yeah. And it's one of those, wherever they're at the state yeah. that they were in, right. The state that they were in, he was go talking about, you know, you got manslaughter, uh, involuntary manslaughter, mm -hmm. you got manslaughter, and then you got, uh, what else do they call it? Some kind of access, something that happens and it takes a life, but it was just, it's, it was, it was a total accident, right? Yeah. No one was threatening. No one was doing that. And he, he's talked about the different stages of it. And now he may not be in trouble for being the guy that like pulled the trigger, but because he was like a director, mm -hmm. he could be in trouble, re be responsible yep. that way instead, which I probably screwed it all up, but I'll, I'll throw that link up there. It's about a 20 minute uh, long video. It's actually really interesting. Yeah, I read some of that. Uh, and, and it's it's basically an accessory Yeah. Uh, to the fact because he didn't do, they're saying he didn't do his job by making sure it was cleared. Cause, right. Because supposedly he said cold gun when he gave it to Alex, which in, from what I was reading in their business, that means there's no ammo in it. It's It's been right. checked. It's been cleared. Check it yourself. Exactly. And this is all in, you know, and I, I I struggle with even talking about this on the podcast for a while because I mean, an ND could happen to anyone. We have to learn from him, and I'm not I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm not saying this guy's an asshole or anything like that. But he was very anti-gun. Oh yeah, and he, he spent is. lots of time on Twitter oh, talking yeah. about all this stuff, and so the memes are going around. And I don't quite know how I feel about those. It's the fact that even though he's anti-gun and bad things happen, someone lost their life. Yep. And like or not like Alec Baldwin, it doesn't matter. He's probably lost his livelihood. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I, I uh, unfortunately, I think I think he's going to come out unscathed. And he might, I, but I mean, he's got to deal with it. Oh, he's got to yeah. live with it. I mean, he took he he did. Oh, yeah. he, he somehow yep. he took he took a life, and he's yeah. got to deal with that. So you know, it could happen. As much as you know, even earlier this summer, there was another instructor in town, and mm -hmm. they had bad things happen at their range, and someone actually had an ND and shot themselves in the hand yep. right and i did talk about i talked about it from a safety aspect of it how we should all learn from it and i didn't go around naming names you know and, and pointing fingers and that's i didn't want to do that on this because you know what something could happen in my class oh absolutely i mean as much as i'm there watching people um and trying to help people something could happen in my class something could happen with me i don't want it to but those are the risks you do take uh, and, you, and you try hard to be safe and, and, and mitigate that. And you don't want any of that stuff to happen. Okay. Right. But it just, it's hard to point fingers and make fun when it could very well be you the next day. Absolutely. My, I think my biggest problem with the whole thing is, is that he's going to walk. Well, he's going to walk. He's going to walk. <laughs> yeah. He's going to walk. Um, but more than that, everybody's pointing fingers and nobody wants to take responsibility. Right. Um, you do something like that. You got to own up to it because you're never going to learn if you don't. Right. I, you know, if you just say, well, it was his fault, it was her fault, it was their fault, um, and you're the one that had your finger on the trigger, you're the one that didn't clear the gun, you're, right. you know, you don't learn from that, You're and you're just going to continue to be irresponsible. Right. And and that's, I think that's probably my biggest problem with it. Yeah, no, I get it. And, you know, as a as much as he's credible or not, right, and you look at the, him as being an anti-gun activist, mm -hmm. we look at him as being not being credible. I mean, this yep. really screwed him up. And oh, yeah. it's, it's very interesting, though, because I saw a news report. I didn't watch. I just saw the headline. And they're already coming out, like the Hollywood uh, um, Actors Guild mm -hmm. is already coming out saying that they want computers to take over CGI. their job. CGI instead of actually having firearms on the set because yep. firearms are dangerous. So look how quickly they turned this mm -hmm. to they're blaming the gun and not the person yes they aren't talking about safety they aren't talking about the safety rules they're blaming the gun yep. all of a sudden and then i saw another clip where um alec baldwin's family was quickly packing bags and leaving their home what's going on i don't know derek said it right you're not getting the real story or the i won't say the real story we're not getting we're not the getting whole the whole story, story yeah. the whole story and you're gonna get what we're gonna get what we get right yep. that's that's what it is so yeah pretty interesting stuff really it is and i'll be interested to see what happened how it turns out but i you know i i just struggle with the fact that there was so many safety issues yeah that you know these are supposed to be trained professionals they're supposed to have somebody on set that um is supposed to be helping guide them and, and things like that and it sounds like that's the guy that walked off the day before right uh because that because of the safety issues and he was just kind of like we're not doing what we're supposed to and left and then this happens the next day yeah I don't, oh man. 
I don't know. It's I, I don't either. It'll be interesting to kind of see how he see how it how it plays out. So um let's go to this next story. So so do you see that video that that video that came out of that uh, they focused on him being a marine, right? A marine vet was what? he was there buying his whatever. His, he, he, he had a brown sack. He was, he was buying his kibble there at the yep. store, his snacks. And um, some people ran in, armed. Armed. Right? There's actually three of them. Oh, was there three? Yeah, I only saw he, two. He mentioned three. I'll play the. I'll play that in a minute. But he mentioned three. There's one on the very that hadn't made it in the door yet. Oh, he okay. took off like quick. Yeah. And they they walked in with a gun, and this guy dearmed. He 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 disarmed him. Very quickly. He, very quickly. Very quickly. And disarmed him. And all you heard was Marine vet disarms, uh, you know, armed robber, right? Yeah. That's all you heard. And, yep. and you know, was, you, uh, kudos to military, kudos to law enforcement. But you know what? Nothing that he did there, <laughs> nothing that he did there looked like it was anything he was trained to do in the Marines. And uh, this will, we'll just, we'll listen to him tell the story. They got a really quick interview, and I won't screw this clip up, I promise. I get this, everyone. An attempted gas station holdup not going as planned, and that is thanks to my next guest. He is a Marine who fought off a group of armed robbers in Arizona. He joins me now. It is James Kilser. It's great to have you. So I saw this video popping up on Twitter over and over again yesterday, and I couldn't stop watching it. Tell me what happened as we show folks at home. Well, uh, I mean, I was sitting there, I was standing there against the counter talking with uh, Everett, the clerk. Uh, I'm there pretty regularly so I you know I knew, knew him fairly well and we were talking about how he needed to not be a gas station clerk anymore he needed to come work out with me over in the at the, the proving grounds and uh, so then I turn around to go leave kind of walk out and as I'm turning around I hear the uh, the door kind of open real aggressively and uh, well, at that point, you know, the spidey senses kind of tingled a little bit, and I looked over and saw one uh, one person with a gun, and they started yelling, open the register, and kind of did a quick sweep. Saw two other guys without no other weapons and decided that's the guy I'm going to hit. And in, what's, in, what's in the bag? I mean, you, you grab the gun, which I think is uh, obviously brave, and it's part of your training, I know, as a Marine. But what was in the bag? I'm sorry? What was in the bag that you hit him with? Oh, uh, two Gatorades, uh, two energy drinks, and uh, a snack. <laughs> and it, I didn't even know the, the bag was – I didn't know the bag was still attached to my body <laughs> at that point. We're completely unaware as – I was actually going to take control of his head and, and the gun at the same time, and the bag just happened to be heavy and attached to me, and it smashed him right in the face. What did your friend Everett say? Uh, well, he jumped over. He ended up jumping over the counter and uh, chasing to see where the other guys went around the corner when they run out. But I mean, he was a little he was a little worked up about it, but. You know, definitely an exciting start to the day. Well, for him, the end of the day, because he's the night guy. Wow, I mean, he's got to be very glad that you are one of the regular customers and that you were there at the time. Um, maybe just a word about your military service and the training that you have that will serve you well and the rest of us uh, for the rest of your life. Well, the, well the, the military training, I mean, there was a quote going around about it's a little misleading. That's kind of two things I said put together, but the military training, it helped a little bit with a little bit with the muscle memory, but I mean, most of it was just being prepared. I take my, I take my personal safety and the safeties of others around me pretty seriously on a regular basis. So just being in the right mindset of if they had this happens, all scary and once once they happened it was i was mentally prepared and well, so i'm so happen. glad that you Did were had to be done we wish that you had been on that I'm philadelphia sorry? train um we're great to meet you and <laughs> if anybody sees james out there buy him either an energy drink i think it was monster was your preferred or a a beer if you if you want one. Thanks so much, I'll James. I'll take a beer, please. Beer? <laughs> Get him a beer, everybody. And I'd love to buy you one as well on me in Yuma, Arizona. Thank you so much, James. I tell you what, I was actually, 
I, I really liked hearing this interview. Yeah. Right. Cause this guy could have went, Oh my gosh. I mean, the, the video that was passed around was military vet saves the day or disarms these robbers. Yep. And, and I mean, we even talked about it on the radio show. Right. And we had, I had people on the radio show actually say, uh, his, uh, only a Marine, only a Marine would be able to, the guy didn't do, I mean, yeah, he saved the day. Kudos to him. It wasn't his Marine training that turned him into a, a, a super secret, you know, ninja squirrel yep. that made him save the day. And I'm glad that he didn't admit that. Right. Cause he could have ran with that. Oh, he could have, ra- he could have rode it. He could have rode that. And it would, it, we'd be still talking about it in another week. Yep. Um, and the fact that he said my military training didn't really come into play. And I'm glad he said that because you could see that. Right. Yeah. But he said, Hey, look, what he did say was, Hey, I pay attention to my surroundings and I take my personal safety very serious. My safety of me and the safety of others very seriously. And that's, that's good. That's what it's about. What that means. He's a concealed carrier, right? You know, he pays attention to what's going on. And, and here's what I was wondering too, was there's two things. He was going to work. Okay, at the proving grounds, I don't know what that it may. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that and that's is. And it's like either. a nuclear thing. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. But um, so he's not allowed to carry a firearm to work with him, or he had a firearm and he chose not to use it. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. He made a call, right? He made a call. Just because you have a gun doesn't mean you need to use a gun. Yep. He was able to sock that guy. They grab the gun kind of twist it away, sock the guy in the face. And actually, the way he grabbed the gun, I couldn't see. You grab it. You you hold it tight enough you pull it out of battery and the gun's typically not going to fire yep. right depending on what it is yep. so i don't know if that was going through his brain as well but he did that and then he pummeled the dude yeah. and the other ones just ran off well yeah you, if you grab the guy with the gun and start pummeling yeah. everybody else is gonna everyone get scared. else just run away so kudos to him he kind of sounds like he might have been a concealed carrier a concealed I, that would carrier be my guy. guess and he and he thing. didn't unholster his firearm he didn't draw his firearm yep. because he didn't feel the need to yeah Fantastic! I, his reflexes were great. Oh yeah, absolutely. He was quick. He was quick. It's like it was like he just like, oh, there you are. Oh, let me get that gun yep. from you. He he didn't hesitate at all. Once he realized what was going on, he just moved. Right. I hope he didn't damage his Red Bulls. No kidding, right? Or his Gatorade. I, I'm sure the clerk probably reimbursed, gave him new ones. Say <laughs> yeah. here you go on the house. Can you get that? Was, that was a pretty heavy bag to get smacked in the Heck head yeah. with. Two Gatorades, two energy drinks. Yeah. So. But uh, anyhow, I just I like that because he didn't fall back on I'm a vet. Look at me, yep. I'm extra I'm extra special. Yeah. And anyhow, that's that's gonna get me to lots of trouble there. <laughs> but so let's I want to talk about one other thing. And I was showing you pictures, and this is something I I think uh, I think gunslinger. I think Mark mentioned it earlier in the summer about there was this there was this uh, thing going around where people I, you saw it about it last summer, right? Oh yeah, they were yeah. aiming guns. Like their guns, and they're taking pictures of them and posting them on online. Yep. Of them pointing their guns directly at their their junk, their genitals. Their cor- genitals. Yeah. What? Why? And, and I, so I never saw any of those pictures, right? Oh, you never saw them last time around? No, I didn't. And oh. so I'm looking around, and I joined this, this Facebook. This like, hey, you might be interested in this, and it's called what was it called? I'm gonna I'm gonna state the full name because it is absolutely insane it was like bargain Bu- every day budget edc there you go budget budget edc and then in parentheses no rules <laughs> okay and and i'm like oh, okay well i'm gonna see people's edcs right i'll just poke around i don't ever comment on these i just look i never post i just look <laughs> yeah and i spent the last two days watching people point loaded firearms at their crotch yeah what, what? The, the ones that got me were like the shotguns with people's toes on the trigger what what is, is this a thing? Apparently, you watched. You were looking at pictures for the last two days. Oh my gosh, what are people thinking? And one guy does it, and he does it with a uh, 1911, and he says, "Oh, easy there, the hammer's not down." And the other guy goes, "Well, I'll one up you." I don't know if these guns are loaded or not, but my gosh, you're breaking all the safety rules. All of them, right? Just because it says keep your finger off the trigger, that also means keep your toe off the trigger. Yes. What oh. about the family one that you showed me? Oh, and then there was a family. They all had firearms. And they're pointing them, <laughs> they're like pointing them at each other to make like a circle. Yep. But they're pointing directly at the person across from, what the hell is wrong with people? And there was kids in that picture. And there was kids in there that picture. There was kids in that picture. What in the hell is wrong with people? But I guess it shouldn't surprise me because before I started seeing these pictures, there was a um, a post that someone said, or that someone, that someone put out there, a statement 
This said, if you haven't had at least two negligent discharges, are you really a firearms enthusiast? What? Yeah. And didn't you say somebody commented, I've had eight. Yeah. There's just people commenting, yeah, I agree with that. You just haven't handled a gun enough. You you handle a gun enough, eventually you're going to have one. Really obey the safety rules. You, you aren't. Yeah. Just follow some basic safety. You'll I mean, be all right. <laughs> I don't understand people. I don't either. Am I doing it wrong, Paul? I, I don't think so. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I've seen what those bullets can do to targets and yeah. uh, you know other things that we've shot at, and uh, I have no intention of yeah. having a gun pointed at me if I can help it. If you have a firearm and you uh, you have a history of having negligent discharges, you probably need to re-examine what you're oh, doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, we need to go over the safety rules. What are the safety rules, Paul? Yeah. Do you uh, know what they are? Um, we're we're gonna point at our crotch. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, that's it. Now keep your no, finger keep, off the trigger till yep. you're ready to fire the gun. Never point the gun at anything you're not willing to kill or destroy. Yep. Treat every firearm like it is loaded, even if you know it is unloaded. Yep. And always know what's in what's in front, what's beyond, and what's around your target. Yep, absolutely. Okay, and remember that, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and so it's it's one of those things. It's like. If you're having negligent discharge, it's because guess what? You're not following the safety rules. And you're pressing the damn trigger. Yeah. That, you're you, pressing the trigger. You, you know, I taught my kids those rules from day one. You know, yeah. all my kids, when they were just little guys, they knew that if they they saw a gun, first of all, don't touch it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when they got old enough that they were, you know, they treated everything that was yeah. like it was loaded, whether it was or not. And they knew how to clear it and check it and mm -hmm. be safe and make sure that, that they were all right. That it's not that hard yeah well and it's ironic to me that that post went up if you haven't had any negligent discharges the people are agreeing with them all over this facebook site all over that whole comment deal i mean there's there's tons of them they're agreeing. yeah yeah no i agree i've had six i've had eight i've had i keep i plan on have more having more i mean you're planning on having more these same people the next day are then pointing guns at their crotches with yes. their fingers on the trigger when do you plan on having that next negligent discharge yeah and what, what a freaking what I, I've been I've been using firearms since I was a child in yes. one way or, or another. Um, but I've never had an ND. Have you aimed one at your crotch? No. I I've never even pointed a gun at anybody else. Yeah, okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm not just, definitely not pointing it at myself. I'm just checking. I just find it ironic the ones that are having all these neck NDs are the ones that feel like it's okay to put their finger on the trigger and point the gun at their yeah. nuts. Yeah. It's absolutely it, insane. It's ridiculous. I need to I need to distance myself from this Facebook page. But to be honest, I just can't look it, away. It's like a wreck. It's like a train it's, wreck. It's like a train wreck. <laughs> every day. Every day there's something different. I'm just going, wow. Got to slow down and look at it. <laughs> wow. And as much as I'm back to Second Amendment, as much as I understand constitutional carry, uh, there's some people that need some kind of some kind of class. I don't want them to be required, but there's some people, that, lots of people that need a class. They need oh, yeah. a safety class. They need a fundamentals class. They need to... Uh, yeah I, I recommend it to anybody that's getting into the firearms yeah. I, I mean how many people have i sent over to you now <laughs> quite a bit yeah it, it, that's always my advice go get some training <sighs> even if it's just some basic stuff people i tell you i tell you you know if someone's looking for some training you know a good place they can get training free tra well almost free training where's that they can sign up for my patreon yeah they can well, sign up for my patreon it's for what is it the price of a a, a fancy coffee right a fancy cup of coffee i don't know what those cost i've never bought one but you can get in on it for five dollars a month which is actually cheaper than a fancy coffee because the fancy coffees i get are like seven bucks holy crap yeah it can't be i can't be buying fancy coffee cheaper to go to the gun show than buy a fancy absolutely coffee. so uh yeah i tell you what if you're interested in I don't know, a couple free videos a month, and I, I, I'm i I'm not behind. I'm a little late on this because I did have a cold that I was fighting and this cough, and I've actually got a couple of um, I've got a couple of uh, uh, videos I've done up today that I just have not uploaded them yet. They take a long time to upload onto Vimeo is where I put them in. So I will get those probably tonight or tomorrow. I'll start them. Sometimes they take all night. Oh, really? Oh, it's just crazy slow. It's a crazy – I don't, or I just don't know what I'm doing. But I'll tell you what, if you want to sign up – for Patreon, become a patron. I'll leave the link down in the notes. And right now, and this applies to everyone that signed up on Patreon, uh, on Patreon so far. Um, from now until the end of the year, you'll be put into a drawing that you can actually win uh, a, a drawing to actually win a, a Patriot, a lifetime Patriot membership at Front Sight. I, and I looked into that. That is pretty awesome. That's a five thousand uh, dollar membership. The, the, I looked into the classes yeah. after you taught. You had the guy on. Yeah. Um, that, Daniel. that's offering Daniel yeah. that's offering it. I looked into it and that's it's it sounds amazing yeah it's 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 a it's a pretty good deal and I, I 
I think people need to take advantage of it. Oh, absolutely. Seriously. Five bucks a month, man. Five yep. bucks a month. You get to listen to me because I'll throw an extra, you know, probably a whiny podcast on there. <laughs> and and you'll have a couple of videos on there you, you can check out. I think we've done, so far we've done, um, I've done grip. I've done uh, 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 one on, on how to press the trigger. And then today, what I do today, I did one talking about trigger reset. I was going to ask if you did reset yet. Uh, yeah, I did one talking about trigger reset, and I did one talking about follow through. And then the next one that I'll do, I'll bring the follow through and the trigger reset together and explain how they work together and why they're so important for follow up shots and, yeah. and et cetera. So, um, yeah, they're not, they're good videos. They're nice. not professionally produced yeah. by any means. Uh, there's as much as I can get done on my iPhone. It, you know they use iPhones for everything now. <laughs> they they certainly do. But I'll leave the link there if you want to sign up there. That'd be fantastic. Um, if you like, I'm just reading the comments really quick. Uh, Caucasian Sasquatch says since ownership is a right, gun safety classes should be in public schools, and I I agree. Yeah, and they should be in public schools. They, they used to be. They used to be. They yeah. used to be. Yeah. But if you listen to the podcast, I really appreciate it. Uh, you can find it on Spotify, Stitcher. Um, yeah, where else? iTunes. You can find it there. You can subscribe. If you want to watch it, you can actually find us on YouTube Live. If you're watching YouTube Live right now, there you go. If not, and you want to see my ugly mug and see what Bathroom Paul looks like, you can definitely do that. Just look at his sexy beard, right? That's right. And you can... In all my glory. You can see the... Uh, I'm almost out of battery. The new toy. Here, would you touch that for me? Uh, no, thank you. Come on, Paul. I'll, I'll hard Paul. pass. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> he, he kind of held more still than I thought he would. I was I was just going to jump over there and get you for a second. Um, but yeah, if you uh, share this, <laughs> that was a little off topic. If you could share uh, the YouTube Live uh, link or like it or subscribe to the page, that would be absolutely fantastic. I would appreciate it. And once again, like always, if you have any comments or questions, you can get a hold of me. You can call me. You can text me, area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. Uh, six two two three, and just say hi. Tell me you want to be on the podcast. Got a question? I don't care. I, I get lonely. Yeah. Well, how but, can they get hold of Bathroom Paul? Uh, you can't. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. That that's what the Cajun Cowboy always says too. Yeah. No. But if you guys want to talk to Bathroom Paul, I'll put you in touch. With yeah. Him. If it's really important, get get in touch with Todd, and we'll we'll get through. We'll work something out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone, you guys have a great week. We are going to be swimming uh, by the time this week's over. Probably way too much rain. And there goes my wood cutting trip I got planned for Saturday. I'm yeah. gonna get buried in the mud. Maybe yeah. I'll, I'll it, it's the it's we're in a drought. It might dry up by then. It might. We'll see. Anyhow, you guys have a great week. We'll see. Uh, I will see you next weekend. Bye. Bye.